we have a new CEO with the SEA. There's been a lot of critique of the SEA and they needed to respond. And for me, I think this is the new CEO, Nico Raffi, saying, I don't want to write a set of rules uh, that may or may not cover all scenarios. I really want to focus you on what matters, outcomes, and you work out what's the best way to get there. When Chris came up with this question, I think a big part of you would like me to come up with some really sort of dirty stories of how people have messed up. What's really sad is I actually don't have those. And maybe what's sad is where this is going wrong is, is, is more operational. Like we've done a lot of work in the UK around financial conduct over the last 10 years. I really believe that most regulated firms are trying to get this right. But it is so difficult, even under the clear, fair and not misleading rules, because of the volume of stuff that you have got to put out there. Um, and the SCA agrees they are actually putting guidance out pretty much every other day at the moment. And there's a podcast where they say uh, what they see is one of the biggest challenges, which is uh, that firms write really generic communications, probably for operational efficiency. That is not, it's not a soundbite that's sexy. But it is the reality. If you look at uh, one of the biggest fines that we've seen for a communications issue, which was a high street retail bank who were fined 90 million, what they did was um, they, they, and I imagine the product changed over time, they had some language in their renewal communications, i.e. not the sale, well not the initial sale, but the renewal, which they might have seen as an in-life transaction, which talked about um, receiving a competitive price at renewal. And there's also an element where they talked about a discount based on the customer's loyalty, which actually wasn't, wasn't being applied. And I don't believe they did that deliberately. I think what happened was when they originally designed the comms and the product that existed, but over time the product changed and they didn't spot in one of their communications, which they probably didn't think of as their prime communication, this change had happened. And it just talks about that operational challenge that you have because there's a lot of communications that go on having them all governed and controlled is really difficult. And then that's not the only challenge um, that you have. Uh, the world is always changing, the products are changing and the expectations are changing. And we see a lot of language now around sustainability, green, ESG elements. That is super confusing. We're all going on a journey to understand what that means. Uh, the SCA has put out a consultation paper around this language. And it's, it's difficult to read, it's quite complex. And it's so interesting when you talk to people about what does this really mean, they understand it in different ways. I actually sit, I was part of our pension trustee um, for Accenture. And we're looking at how do we uh, change that portfolio um, and really think about sustainability and embed those values. And just getting to terms with what this language means is, is difficult when we are professionals in this space uh, with the time to spend to learn and the, and the best educators coming in if you are uh, you know type of time uh, you know not working in this space this stuff is is really difficult to get to grip with uh, and i think it's probably one of our next challenges because it does very much link in with this consumer duty on uh, requirements around consumer understanding and finally finally vulnerability um this stuff is this stuff is really hard and I, I think you probably could find some very specific examples where vulnerable customers have not been considered in the generic communications that are put out there. Um, the SCA is talking about a couple of examples where uh, you know, people haven't been able to see properly and actually the communication text is very small or not been given to them straight away in Braille. Um, but it's also just thinking about, uh, and another example from the SCA is are you sort of pushing people to make decisions too fast, particularly when they're vulnerable, not having thought about when you do the communications um, and building that into your journey to give them some time because vulnerable customers have needs that we really need to think about and design for when we're designing good communications. So I guess that hopefully gives you a feel for what some of these, well, where people go wrong and what these challenges are. But I am really conscious a lot of this is operational reflecting the fact that you have so much volume here. It really brings a lot of different perspective into where, where these faults kind of come in. And in, in the first point when you were talking about, you know, just changes to a product as, as things adapt over time, you forget how integral it is to make sure that, con like, it's not about just aligning this product 
to that audience and then you just that's it you have to continually monitor as this product grows that it still aligns with that audience and if it falls out of alignment that's it's such a challenge 